Okay, so I hope you are all relaxed because we're gonna jump into the amazing relaxing topic of hydroxide relaxers. This is where the real fun occurs and where all the real damage can occur if you do it wrong. Failure to use a hydroxide relaxer appropriately can cause a client to go permanently bald from the scar tissue. It can cause your credibility to go down the toilet. It can cause you to lose your license. And in certain states, when they ask you questions about hydroxide relaxers, they, you can fail state board if you answer wrong. So I'm gonna have you guys watch a YouTube video. I'm gonna try to link it down below in the description box. Watch this video. The stylist did a really good job at showing you what happens if you mix a thio and a hydroxide relaxer. One thing to remember is that hair that has been treated with a sodium hydroxide relaxer is unfit for a perm, a thio, or a soft curl, and vice versa. If you use a perm on someone like liquid perm with the rods, you cannot relax someone's hair to make it straight with a hydroxide relaxer. Don't do it you will have the hair immediately melt off. The reason being, and there's different explanations for this, but one of them has to do with the bond that occurs with the lanthionization. When you have the lanthionine bond, you don't neutralize it like you would by using a peroxide because it won't rebond anything. There's nothing to rebond, so that can cause breakage. If you actually take hydrogen peroxide and you put it over relaxed hair, thinking to neutralize it, you can actually cause breakage and the hair to dry out and frizz. If you have um, someone with relaxed hair, typically we only use semi-permanent color. We do not use anything with peroxide, so no demi colors, no ammonia colors, no bleach. People do this anyway, but I say do so at your own discretion. Mixing bleach and a hair relaxer could potentially cause the hair to fall off. Two very strong chemicals. I'll tell you this example that I heard from someone. She worked at a beauty school, and one of her students um, had a you know, broad sister in, did a beautiful um, head of red color on her sister. Look great, and then she told the teacher, I'm just gonna relax her ends a little bit, and you know, she thought she can trust her. She took the whole relaxer, put it from scalp to ends on her sister's freshly colored hair. Guess what? Her hair slid off her scalp. All of it in one clean soup. She goes, Miss L, Miss L, Miss L, her hair is running down the sink, and she goes, I oh, know. Not only was that not a, well, that was a client, but it was a worse client, it was a family member. Could you imagine ruining a family member's hair like that and having to go home to it, whereas a client goes home and they're upset? That's serious. So hydroxide relaxers are no joke. No, in the caution box, it says hair that has been treated with a hydroxide relaxer is unfit for permanent waving and will not hold a, hold a curl. The disulfide bonds have been permanently broken and can never be reformed. Application of a thio relaxer or thio permanent on hair that has been treated with hydroxide relaxer will not properly relax or curl the hair. It may cause extreme damage. Hair that has been treated with hydroxide relaxers is unfit for thio relaxers and soft curl permanents. Also know the language is very important. So I know that in you know the world of um, black or ethnic hair, when we say the word perm, we're talking about relaxer, something to straighten hair. If someone um, has been straightening their hair and they said they used a perm, you wanna figure out what kind of perm. And I typically ask, well, did it smell? Did it smell like rotten eggs? Did you have to put a second liquid solution on it? Then I figure if it smelled bad, it's a thio relaxer. And if it didn't smell and they said it, it burned the scalp, that's typically a hydroxide relaxer. That's how you're able to kind of tell what language. And when in doubt, the safest thing is to do nothing if you're not definitively 100% sure what they used on their hair. My own opinion, and if you ever watch Miss Miko, who I love, her own opinion, the most safest relaxer is a thio relaxer. They claim that it is not strong enough to sufficiently relax coily hair. I call bull on that. You want to know why? That chemical keeps working. It doesn't shut itself off. You keep processing until you remove the desired rate of curl. Worst case scenario, you do it again after two weeks. It's safer on the hair. It's more compatible with bleach and color. Hydroxide relaxers are not, and there's also this other lie that comes up where they say no lie is better. There's a certain brand that is at the drugstore, it has a picture of a beautiful olive tree, and it says infused with olive oil, and wonderful for the hair, and it's organic. Well, guess what? <laughs> organic means zero, it means zilch. You can still damage your hair with a no lie relaxer because no lie is a lie. The chemical just doesn't make you that have that burning feeling that it's a signal to take it off now. You could overprocess your hair with a no lie relaxer. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, oh, and also no too, when I said about the terminology of perms, there was another case I've heard of where the student um, who was black, she had a client come in and it was this little old white lady and she wanted a, um, a perm and she thought like, oh, I have to put a hydroxide relaxer on. She put a hydroxide, sodium hydroxide on this lady's hair. This lady's hair started coming out. That's where I gotta be really careful. So know the hydroxide relaxers have a hot hydroxide ion and that is the active ingredient in them. 
They're very strong alkali with a pH over 14. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, and guanidine hydroxide are all types of hydroxide relaxers which can swell the hair up to twice its normal diameter. So now you're talking on the pH scale, very alkaline. When you go to a pH of 14, you have to be very careful. And this is why I say you never want to start with a super relaxer, which is the strongest, because you can go bad real quick. It'll work like that. Worst case scenario, use a gentler relaxer, process that, and then you're able to you know, keep it going and relax the hair to as smooth as needed. So we explained why they're not compatible. Also know that the pH is so high that the alkalinity alone is what's breaking the disulfide bonds. Average pH of the hair is 5 and many relaxers have a pH of about 14. Since each step in the pH scale represents a tenfold change, a pH of 13 is a hundred million times more alkaline than a pH of 5. pH of 14, even more alkaline. So they break um, hair bonds differently in lanthionization. The hair hydroxide relaxers permanently straighten the hair. The relaxers remove a sulfur atom from the disulfide bond and convert it into a lanthionine bond. A disulfide bond consists of two bonded sulfur atoms. Lanthionine bonds contain only one sulfur atom. The disulfide bonds that are broken by hydroxide relaxers are broken permanently and can never be reformed. This is why hair that has been treated with hydroxide relaxer is unfit for permanent waving and will not hold a curl because there's only one sulfur atom and not two. Also know that if you try to use chemicals like Olaplex or an additive in your relaxer, that will not stop you from getting damage. You can still get hair melting, hair damage, and a lawsuit if you're not careful. So there's different types of the relaxers. Um, you're gonna become familiar with metal hydroxide relaxers and they're formed by a metal such as sodium Na, potassium K, lithium Li, and they're combined with oxygen and hydrogen. Metal hydroxide relaxers include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and lithium hydroxide. Although calcium hydroxide is sometimes added to hydroxide relaxers, this is not used by itself to relax hair. And know that all metal hydroxide relaxers only contain one component and are used exactly as they are packaged in a container. No mixing is used. The hydroxide ion is the active ingredient in all hydroxide relaxers. There is no significant difference in the performance of these metal hydroxide relaxers. So know that sodium hydroxide are the most commonly called um, lie relaxers or the oldest, they've been around for um, longer. Actually, it was discovered, and this is why you gotta watch the movie Good Hair. It was discovered by a black man that was working in a factory. He put it on wool and realized the wool had straightened. Then he decided to put it on himself and then realized, oh, this can straighten hair. Then he started marketing it as a product used to straighten hair. So they also call it lye or caustic soda. Um, typically, you're not gonna call it caustic soda. I know in the movie Good Hair, they call it like um, white crack or something or liquid crack. It's a really cool name they have for it. Um, but typically, we're not gonna say that in front of a client. They, or no, it was a cream crack, they called it. So it's the same chemical that's used in drain cleaners. What strength do you think this drain cleaner is? Do you think it's super mild or medium? <laughs> and depilatories. Then my favorite, no lie, which is a lie, is lithium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, and they're advertised and sold as no lie, no mixed relaxers. They technically are not lie, but the chemistry is identical, and there's very little difference in their performance. They can still damage. The other one that's typically sold over the counter is guanidine hydroxide, and they're advertised and sold as no lie relaxers. There is no lie, but the hydroxide ion is still an active ingredient, and they behave the same way. Guanidine hydroxide relaxers contain two components that must be mixed immediately prior to use. These relaxers straighten hair completely with less scalp irritation than other relaxers. Most guanidine hydroxide relaxers are recommended for sensitive scalp and sold over the counter for home use. Although they reduce scalp irritation, they do not reduce hair damage. They swell the hair slightly more than other hydroxide relaxers and are more drying because what happens is they leave behind mineral deposits and those mineral deposits block um, conditioners and other ingredients from helping the hair. They can make the hair look dull, make it look gray from all the calcium buildup. So what you have to use is a chelator. So whether you're using Malibu C or use a chelating treatment, also use a good chelating shampoo, which is acidic, to take away the buildup. Because if the buildup keeps building up and building up, you're gonna get breakage and dryness. Know that lye relaxers are harsh on scalp, um, gentle on hair, and the no lie relaxers are harsh, are gentle on scalp and harsh on hair is how I always remember that. Because typically it's how your scalp will feel and they're gonna feel better with the no lie relaxers. 
They also talk about low pH relaxers, which typically, um, I've never seen them. If you know any low pH, or pH relaxers, comment down below on what a, you know, a particular brand would be. So they are sulfites and bisulfites. Um, they're marketed as alternative relaxers. They use ammonium sulfite and ammonium bisulfite. They're marketed as medium and alternative relaxers, or mild and alternative relaxers. And they're compatible with thio relaxers, but not compatible with hydroxide relaxers. They do not completely straighten curly hair. Low pH relaxers are intended for color damaged or fine hair. So, and they give you a caution box and it makes, it tells you make sure that you're not using metal hair dye. Extreme damage will occur because of the massive pH reaction. Um, you cannot use any metal tools with the lye relaxer. Look up the movie Good Hair and you'll see they take a, a soda can, they put it in the chemical lye and they pull it up and the whole um, can is eaten away completely. The old version of this book used to show metal foil testing for relaxer, which they changed now to plastic clips and a paper because what would happen is the metal would actually get dissolved completely by the chemical. So no, um, when you combine a relaxer service with permanent or demi-permanent, you always want to relax the hair first and color it two weeks later. That's the best way to protect the hair. I typically say don't do it at all. Many manufacturers um, call demi-permanents no lift, but all demi-permanents uses low volume peroxide and other alkalizing agents such as MEA and oxidizing agents such as hydrogen peroxide. Um, in other words, like the term no lie, the term no ammonia does not mean no chemicals are used. So you can still get hair breakage if you use a demi or an ammonia free color over a relaxer. Do not use bleaches or high lift products on relaxed hair. The common is, combination has resulted in many lawsuits. There's been cases on the people's court where they have a hair expert witness come in and they know that style is getting in trouble. You can use semi-permanent products the same day after you relax because they contain no ammonia or peroxide. You want to relax the hairs, relax hair first, then apply them. And when in doubt, always um, do a strand test to see what would happen. Um, know that same day chemical service always compromises the hair's integrity to some degree, whether you're combining hydroxide based chemicals and hair color or thio based colors and chemicals. For instance, same day coloring and Japanese thermal straightening can be done incorrectly and can result in extreme hair breakage and many internet postings, um, which will hurt your credibility. So don't be that stylist, especially if you're one of my style students. Mm -hmm. Hmm. If you're one of my students and I see your name in the paper, you're going to have to live with the shame of Mr. B being very, very upset with you. So you'll also hear a lot of times when you're doing relaxers, you have to base the scalp. So what they'll do is they're sold in two formulas, base and no base formulas. Base, which is also known as protective cream, is an oily cream that will protect the skin and scalp during hair relaxing. Base relaxers require the application of a base cream to the entire scalp prior to the use of the relaxer. Because these relaxers are very caustic, you don't want a pH to 14 in your scalp, it's gonna burn. So the base cream, when you base the scalp, it's gonna protect it and it will sit on top of it and it protects the scalp. So when you do get processing, it's not harsh. If you miss a spot and you're not careful, that will itch and that will ruin your whole service. Know that you do not want protective base cream to touch the actual hair, you only want it on the scalp because it will slow down the chemical processing. Um, also, to an extent, I can't even say, because you want you want to have the person not wash their hair for a long time before doing this. You do not want to wash the hair and then apply this relaxer. That is a huge no-no. I've seen people do it online, and even with the no-lie relaxers, they get irritation. So what happens is you want to make sure the hair is you know not clean, dirt, dirty to an extent, because this chemical can eat through anything. You want to make sure it's cleansed and mineral. So what you want to do is do a mineral removing treatment have them come back in a few days to do the relaxer. Never do it on freshly washed hair or they'll be screaming. Also know that with the um, relaxer, you wanna make sure you get cream around the ears, protect the ears, use um, something to hold the hair up if you're doing a virgin relaxer. You also wanna make sure that when you're doing the relaxer that you are careful of any kind of metal jewelry, have the client remove their earrings, any kind of chains, any necklaces, because that will react violently and it can melt and ruin their best jewelry. Also know that um, what is it? When I talk about clean hair, I can't even say gel because I know that if you do have relaxer on, it is so strong it will eat through gel. That's how strong this chemical is. Know that no base relaxers do not require the application of a protective base cream. They contain a protective base cream that is designed to melt at body temperature as the relaxer is applied. They cause the base cream inside the thing to metal and settle on the scalp in a thin, oily, protective coating. No base relaxers are an improvement only on the protection that's provided the scalp by to the skin 
know that for added protection, protective base creams may be applied to the entire hairline, even with no base relaxers, just to be extra cautious. Know that most chemical relaxers are available in three strengths, mild, regular, or super. The difference in strength of hydroxide relaxers um, is important because it's a concentration. Typically, they're going to have a lower pH because it's a lower concentration. Mild strength relaxers are formulated for fine color treated or damaged hair. Regular strength relaxers are for normal texture with medium natural curl. And super strength relaxers are only used for maximum straightening on very coarse, extremely curly, and resistant hair. And when in doubt, always choose the gentle alternative, mild instead of regular, regular instead of super. And you always want to do periodic strand testing. This will help you tell when the hair is sufficiently relaxed. Typically, when you are relaxing hair, you don't want to go over 80%. Some say 90. I say play it safe. Go to 80%. If you make hair 100% straight, it will not hold its own weight, and the hair will actually snap from gravity. So after the relaxer is applied, stretch the strands to see how fast the natural curls are being removed. You may also smooth and press the strand to the scalp using the back of your comb. Applicator or gloved finger, be gentle. If the strand remains smooth, it is sufficiently relaxed. If the curl returns, continue processing. Processing time varies on many factors, client's hair, product, all that. So hydroxide neutralization, unlike thioneutralization, hydroxide neutralization is an acid alkali neutralization that neutralizes, deactivates the acid residues left on hair by the real axer, and it lowers the pH of the scalp. In layman's terms, when you're doing a relaxer for a hydroxide relaxer, there is not a true relaxing, like with the, or not true relaxing, not a true neutralization with the perm. You're actually normalizing the hair. You're bringing the hair back to its normal pH using a special acidic normalizing shampoo. You're gonna rinse the, all that relaxer out of the hair, should rinse out easy. Then you're gonna shampoo in frequently the special shampoo that will return the hair back to normal. It's an acidic shampoo. Some shampoos even do a colored indicator so it comes up when it um, touches the relaxer and that's your cue to keep rinsing and rinsing and keep doing it until there is no faint trace at all. Also know that after you relax the hair, you do not want to use extreme heat. Some people do. I always go the safe way, do a roller set, do things that are very gentle because the hair has been put through a lot. Know that um, the neutralization does not revolve around oxidation or rebuilding. You're just normalizing the pH back to normal. So, what I'm gonna do is I'll let you guys go on your um, break here and I'm going to end this and we're gonna talk more about neutralization if I have anything else to add, some procedures that you should go through, talk about the chart, and then we're gonna talk about keratin straightening which is a brand new technique.